Today we talk about uh, the importance of eustachian tube uh, in children. Eustachian tube is not a tube, uh, as uh, one of my uh, dearest colleagues uh, says with uh, uh, Professor Elio Cunsolo from Bologna. It's not a tube, it's much more than a tube. It is an organ functionally active, which is extremely important for the function of uh, middle ear. Uh, the eustachian tube is not new. Uh, actually, Bartolomeo Eustachio described for the first time the eustachian tube in 1562 in Italy. But we know that the eustachian tube is extremely important in children because up to six years of age, the eustachian tube is quite different from the tube that we found in older children or in adults. What do I mean? Eustachian tube is short, less angled, which means that it is horizontal. And what does this implicate? This implicates that what happens in the nasopharynx becomes extremely and directly important for the middle ear and there is a, a close involvement between nasopharynx and middle ear thanks to the eustachian tube. But the eustachian tube, as I said, is not only a tube, it's an organ. It's an organ immunologically active with an innate immunity and an adapted immunity, which is lower in younger children than in older children and in adults. Moreover, the eustachian tube has mucosal folds that act like microturbinates, the one that we found in the nose, which regulate the temperature and humidity of the air. So why do we have to take into account the uh, role of the eustachian tube? We have to fight against all the possible damages that can damage the mucosa of the eustachian tube. And second, we have to uh, find the way to avoid the movement of nasopharyngeal secretion through the eustachian tube to the middle ear. Uh, what can we do? First, we have to avoid the use of uh, pacifier during the day in young children because using uh, pacifier means uh, uh, favoring the uh, moving of uh, nasopharyngeal secretion with all the possible bacteria from the nasopharynx to the middle ear. Uh, in addition, we have to uh, think about the new and actual use of push and pull bottles, the ones that are used by younger and toddlers, children, uh, because they are easy to, for drinking, but they are not easy. Actually, they are very uh, dangerous for the function of the eustachian tube and they can be a risk for middle ear infection. The second point uh, is uh, uh, passive smoking. Passive smoking uh, is uh, a damage for the mucosa and we have to remember that we, we have as pediatrician, I am a pediatrician, we have to ask parents but we have also to ask about uh, the smoking habits of uh, grandparents and caregivers and usually parents are very uh, cautious in declaring that other members of the family actually smoke uh, in front of the children. The third point uh, is the role of adenoids. Adenoids are usually thought as a problem if they are really great, if there is an hypertrophy of the adenoids. But now we know that the adenoids are not only a problem if they are really obstructing adenoid, they can be a problem if they are infected. And infection means that even small adenoids, which are the reservoir of bacteria which aggregate in biofilms, can be really a reservoir for recurrent infection. What can we do? Last thing, uh, wash the nose and clean the nose from mucosal secretion and use warm and or actually lukewarm and slow uh, volume of saline to remove nasal secretion. We have really to protect our eustachian tube in order to protect the middle ear.